Okay, so <clears throat> I would like uh, to talk a bit about some, some new developments we did during the past uh, six months, or nine months maybe. And um, there's, a, there's a new release uh, coming out soon. Um, I'll say more about that at the end. But, um, well, one of the, the major features in there is um, a new type of index. Um, which we introduced and tested for quite a few months and uh, it's now time to, to get more feedback from, from users about that. Oh, sorry. <coughs> up. Important even than 
uh, looking up the, being able to look up the value in the index is that the optimizer can rewrite the expression because it can make some assumptions about um, the expression. So for example, the optimizer will usually um, try to first check uh, for date issue equals 2007. And if it sees that only a few documents match that all, then it will um, not evaluate the rest of the expression for those documents not matching the expression. So you can really get down from millions of documents to just a few thousand or so um, for evaluating most of the expression. And that's, that's what really makes the difference and can result, result in query times being 10 or sometimes even 100 times faster um, with proper indexes defined. Okay, so there has always been range index in the list. So the one you define for equals, uh, greater than, less than, uh, starts with, ends with string functions. Um, basically, the old range index uh, went back to the early days of exist, so start of the 2000s, yeah, so maybe 2002, 2003 or so. And it has been reworked several times, but still it had some uh, limitations which could not be overcome by, by just re uh, rewriting it again over and over again. So the old index was B-tree based. It was baked into the core of exist, so um, you could not disable it. It was um, hard to maintain um, because it was really in the, in the, in the core exist classes. And the main problem was that it limited um, update speed because it was bound to the collection. And um, if the collection grew, then your updates became slower because updating the index, it cost more time. Okay? So um, you, on the exist list, you often read tips like uh, if your collection is large, split it into smaller ones and just put uh, several thousand documents in it, but not more, and so on. That was all because of, of this mainly, yeah? So, just the collection size had a negative influence. And um, also the index was, was quite efficient for, well, if you were just searching for place Prague, then um, it was really fast. But it was quite inefficient on, on frequent hookups. So, very often, I mean, this is a TI example, you have uh, place names and then they have a type, yeah? And those, those types are very frequent, so we only have three or four of them normally in, in millions of documents, okay? So um, those infrequent lookups, they were rather slow. So you have always had to think about the order of your filters. So in this case, it would have been better to look up drug first and then type equals main. Yeah, but that was something users had to know. So um, last year, uh, finally, I, I, I had one customer um, who had major problems with this because unfortunately they had rather flat data. Um, so it was a database containing some phone information. And uh, they basically just stored it like, like this. So they had lots of lots of parameters with a name and a value. That was it. Yeah. So a very, a very flat um, structure, but well, that was how the system, how the system was. And basically, they could have used some p-value score, but um, well, this data had to be combined with other data, so uh, they did not want to switch. Um, yeah. And when working on this, uh, we were trying to optimize queries, and um, while we we were successful, uh, kind of, but not without using lots of tricks. Yeah? Um, and it's easy to see that if you have an next path expression like this one, to look up a simple parameter, so to look up the model, um, yeah, processing is, has to scan through really lots of nodes, and they have millions of nodes. Yeah? So um, you had millions of parameters, and then you always had to look up for name first and then for the value. <coughs> and uh, this turned out to be 
always be rather slow, even though we manage to optimize it. So there are a few tricks you can apply, like uh, first look up uh, the parameter name, then use the ancestor axis to get back to the value and all that. So it's possible to optimize it by hand somehow, but it, it's, it's not nice and uh, looks ugly and uh, not very readable. Um, so they asked if, if uh, there's a, would be a more general solution to the problem. And uh, then finally also uh, sponsored the, the initial development of, of a new index, which is more efficient. Finally. So um, instead of redefining or, or refactoring the index, um, I decided to write a complete new one. Um, which is now based on the scene 4 because, well, our old P3 approach wasn't bad. I mean, if you, um, if we look at some real queries later on, you'll see that it is also, can also be quite fast. But um, I was kind of getting tired about maintaining my own um, low-level storage uh, stuff. Yeah? And, um, well, why, why not? Since, since most, of the, <coughs> most of the things we want to index are really strings, so efficient string processing is most important. You know? And um, so why not use an engine which is already known to be efficient with string processing and has a lot of features there you can get for free. So this index is based on the scene 4. It's no longer baked into the core of Exist, but this is a blockable extension module, so you can ena enable and disable it as you like. Um, it is much more scalable because the dependency on the collection size has been dropped and uh, we would basically expect updates um, to be independent of the, of the size of your, your database, more or less. So um, this has been, leads to, this leads to faster updates. And um, we also have a lot more configuration features just because we have more features in the back end which we can use. And one of the most important features is that um, this index has been um, designed so you cannot only optimize, for example, the name equals model lookup, but you can um, pull everything you need um, into one index. So this index is able to process this entire expression with just one index lookup. So we will come to that later, but basically it will replace the whole expression here with a um, very efficient um, index lookup, which is just run once, and uh, this here is thrown away. Basically. So the result was that queries like that now really can fly, which means that um, they are, some people measured um, 100 times uh, speed increase so on, on really large databases with uh, many hundred gigabytes in this. So we get an improvement of up to 100 times. Um, yeah, so how do you configure this index? Well, we try to keep it somewhere uh, backwards compatible with the old index. So it will basically um, recognize the the index configuration syntax in, in collection.xconf. Um, in the simple case, you always have a great element given, then you uh, mention the queue name, which should be indexed, you give it the type. Um, there are some additional features, like you can switch on uh, off uh, case sensitivity, and uh, you can also use collations directly. Um, so in, in this example, by adding uh, strength uh, equals primary, um, we can make the index to ignore accents and the like. Uh, so that's, that's, that's quite handy um, because it saves you a lot of processing you would otherwise need to do within the query itself. So that's a, that's a simple type of configuration, which is more or less compatible with the old approach. So it's rather easy to take the old collection.xconf and transform it into, into the new one and benefit from the new index. But 
those simple configurations don't give you the maximum performance boost. Yeah, so they, they will be faster, but uh, we are not at uh, the maximum here yet. But we come to that if we create combined indexes. Yeah, so in a combined index, um, you have to specify your root element, so which in this case we say that uh, this index always is rooted at mods mods, which is the, the root element for a mods uh, bibliographic record. And then we can define a number, a number of fields um, for parts of this root element. Okay? So for example, we have a field mods name, which indexes uh, mods name, mods name part below mods mods as a string. Um, or we have an, I, an index on the ID uh, attribute, or we have one on the date issued, one on authority, one on the lang attribute. <coughs> so you can define as many fields there as you like for uh, the, this concrete root element. And what it will do is um, optimize every, every XPath expression, which starts with this root element and then somehow queries parts of it or filters on parts of it, um, which have fields defined in the, in the configuration. So this more complex book up here, which searches uh, for books written by Dennis Ritchie in 1979, is actually replaced on the fly in the background with one single index lookup. Okay, so instead of searching for date issued equals 1979 <coughs> and name part equals Dennis Ritchie, we uh, combine those two lookups into actually one, which we can send to the index, and it responds very, in a very quick time. Okay, so the whole the whole expression is rewritten. And with the old range index, the indexing would have worked like, um, well, it would first have tried to figure out uh, uh, by author Dennis Ritchie and then take those notes and uh, check if they have a date issued 1979. So um, in this order, it was performance was okay, but if you changed it, so first look up date issued and then author, um, you already saw it getting slower because um, you will understand that there are lots, lots more records with uh, date issued 1979 than records written by Dennis Ritchie. Yeah. Um, and this is completely replaced now, so the entire expression will be replaced with a different one. Okay, and that's uh, Let's dive a bit deeper into how this optimization is done. Um, so basically, the new range index um, is pluggable. So it is not active if you disable it, and it will not rewrite the query at all if it is disabled. And um, we basically implemented a, yeah, a callback mechanism, so the optimizer, when, when um, compiling the query, it will check which indexes are available and might be interested in um, re query rewriting. And then the index is called to rewrite uh, the query. And what it basically does in the simple case is it takes this expression and replaces uh, the origin input that it should equal something into a function called range EQ. Okay, so that's, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, in this case. And for sure, um, this is only evaluated if an index is available. I mean, if you, if you remove the index, then it will fall back to the original um, optimization, or not, not optimized version. Yeah, that's for the simple case, and for the more complex one, well, <laughs> if you have an expression like this, um, we basically want to replace the whole the whole X bar yeah, as far as possible um, with just one call to the index. And this is not um, not very elegant but um, well it's it's the fastest uh, the fastest approach 
you could get at. Um, so simply the whole expression is replaced with one function call which com um, combines uh, the different uh, lookups that you have to do. And uh, the scene in the back end is then able to really process this in, in one single step. Okay, so just a few notes on, on why the scene again. Uh, we already mentioned it. Um, the yeah, spring indexes there are just super fast, usually, with, without uh, spending too much time on, on uh, configuration and so on. Um, it does scale very well, um, as far as we could see so far. There's nothing to complain um, yet, so I have not encountered many problems. And we had a routine <coughs> index for, for full text index since a long time, so we have some experience there. Um, well, we get lots of additional features for free, like uh, support for connections and, and all that stuff. And what really made this switch possible was that in Lucene Peer 4, quite a lot of things has, have changed. So we now have support for binary and numeric keys. Um, in Lucene 4, and that was not possible before. So. Uh, it's no longer a problem. For example, uh, if you create an index on excess on an excess space time, um, it's internally transformed into a binary, and then this binary is indexed, and that's uh, very very fast as well. So looking up that binary representation of the date is very fast. Um, <clears throat> so that's all not a problem, <clears throat> even though the scene is optimized for strings. Uh, it's still very, very good for um, other types of, of, of keys. And then uh, also an important feature which was introduced in the scene is this concept of doc values fields, uh, which is basically metadata you attach to a, to a document. And this allows for a very efficient mapping we see between the scene document and uh, the XML analysis we process, which is we just uh, or the doc ID node ID of the exist XML node as doc values fields and uh, scanning through those is very, very quick. Okay, yeah, what's on to do? Uh, well, regular expressions, um, at and match, I, I could not optimize that yet because uh, the Lucene regular expression syntax is much more limited than the one <coughs> in the XQuery specs. But um, yeah, there are ways to uh, get around that. Um, we basically just have to put it on a lower level. Um, but that's something um, I still need to work at within the next weeks. Um, we had some early adopters testing all this. And um, I mean, since, since uh, the index was written for a commercial project, it, it certainly has been in production for half a year or so. But um, it was a very yeah, specific scenario. So we really need more testers in other scenarios. To, to get more feedback and find the remaining bottlenecks which might still be there with some types of updates and things like that. And finally, uh, as I said, this, this uh, new approach of using the scene in the index provides a lot of uh, other ways to, to speed up things which we have not used yet. yet. So, yeah, that's the end of this one. Uh, let's just maybe do a quick demonstration. So let's say uh. Okay, so this is with the Instance having uh, one of three million of those MOS records, I think, and uh, this is running on the old range index. And that we have an expression which is rather, yeah, requires us to scan through lots of, of records because we want uh, a record with an author starting with Dennis, and the book should have been published before uh, 2003. And running this with the old index, let's see. Takes a bit. As you can see, what do we have? 2.6 seconds. 
Now let's just switch quickly switch databases. I have to do the same one. Okay, so there's the, the second one with new age index, and it has not warmed up, so it's freshly started. Let's see how long it takes here. So first round, we're down to 400 milliseconds, and second round, it's just oh, is it 99 milliseconds. <laughs> uh, it's really a difference. Okay, thank you.
<coughs> will still be optimized for this entire Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. So the next speaker is. Uh,